Hello everyone. <clears throat> I hope you are doing well. First things first. Next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. Please post your questions in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel on the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. I will do my best to answer them for you. Just so you know, if a question deserves a dedicated discussion, I will only give a brief answer in the Q&A video and elaborate on it in a future video. Also, I cannot guarantee your satisfaction since I only share what I know with the community. So, please do not feel upset if you think my answer is not as you expected or if it will be against my intention for this session. You are allowed to ask whatever you want, but I have the right to answer whatever I want. So, please be reasonable. It is a free service to the community. <clears throat> this week's video is the 14th in the Decoding Martial Proverbs series. If it is your first time watching this series, please check out the series playlist in the description where you will find the prior 13 videos. Also, I have been posting at least one short sentence about martial art, Xiu Dao and other related text on the community section of YouTube for over a month now to record my thoughts on those practices and share them with the community. All of those short sentences are my own original creations. So far, I have only been posting them as and one thought come to mind. Whenever it's the right time, I will talk more about those in an organized manner in dedicated videos. I won't be responding directly to your comments on the post, but your comments definitely won't be ignored and I will explain topics in the future based on your comments. Now, let's warm up with uh, Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's topic is Chong Ru Ruo Jing, a popular term in a different format used even today. Following chapter 12, Lao Zi introduced a concept called Gui Shen. Gui means cherish and respect. Shen means body and life. Gui Shen or respect oneself and respect life is one of his important philosophical concepts. The term Chong Ru Ruo Jing is in the first sentence of this chapter. He said, quote, Chong Ru Ruo Jing, end quote. Chong means fever, Ru means disgrace, Ru means theme, Jing means to be feared, shock. Put together, Chong Ru Ru Jing means fever and disgrace would seem equal to be feared. Then Lao Zi added another sentence called Gui Da Huan Ruo Shen. Translation Regard a great calamity as you do your own body. End translation. In other words, honor and the great calamity to be regarded as personal conditions of the same kind. Then Lao Zi elaborated on the reason behind his claim. In the end, he concluded that chapter by saying, quote, Gu Gui Yi Shen Wei Tian Xia, Ruo Ke Ji Tian Xia, Ruo Yi Shen Wei Tian Xia, Ruo Ke Tuo Tian Xia. End quote. Translation <coughs> Therefore, he who would administer the kingdom, honoring it as he honors his own person, may be employed to govern it, and he who would administer it with the love which he bears to his own person may be entrusted with it. End translation. 
It seems here Lao Tzu explained his opinion to the king about how to manage a country, a concept of Gui Shen or respect life. Now, let's talk about how Xiu Dao practitioners have applied this concept in practice for over 2000 years. In Taoism, body or Shen is an important concept that Taoists should pay special attention to. It is the opposite of Buddhism regarding the function of the body in that the body is as important as the spirit to humans. Only when a person reaches a certain level, for example, when the spirit can leave the body, does the spirit become more important than the body. It is very close to Confucian belief. For example, some Taoist schools that were strongly influenced by Confucianism, such as the Middle School, believe that Shen Chun Ze Dao Chun, Shen Wang Ze Dao Wang, or when the body exists, then the Tao will exist, or when the body disappears, then the Tao will disappear. It is very close to the Neo Confucian concept. Some other Taoist schools, especially those that emphasize the importance of the spirit, believe that before reaching a certain level, such as one spirit can leave the body, can practice without the physical body. These schools believe that. Only the spirit will be eternal or immortality means the everlasting spirit, but not the physical body. However, even these schools believe that the body is critical in practice, since it is the place where our energy begins and ends. In other words, Taoism focuses on the spirit but also emphasizes the importance of the body. We have to differentiate the ultimate goal of a practice from the path of a practice. The ultimate goal of a Taoist practice is to nourish our spirit, while the path of a practice focuses on the body. Without the path, the ultimate goal would be impossible to achieve. This is the fundamental belief of a Xiu Dao practice. To summarize, in that chapter, Lao Tzu used the term Chong Lu Ruo Jing to express his philosophical belief in body and spirit. With that, let's now decode three martial proverbs. Topics covered in today's video include first, value of martial proverbs, second, proverb 1, San Jian Xiang Zhao. Topic 3. Proverb 2, Qu Shi Sa Shou, Zhao Ren Cheng Quan. Topic 4, Proverb 3, Shi Fu Chang Xiong. And Topic 5, Take Aways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1, Value of Martial Proverbs. A martial proverb or Quan Yan is quite a popular method to summarize knowledge. We all know that it is easy to describe a movement but hard to conceptualize it in a short sentence since its meaning has to be clearly expressed while keeping the sentence easy to memorize. A high quality martial proverb is pretty difficult to create. In the older days, there was a saying Chuan Chuan Bu Chuan Jue. Chuan means teaching, Chuan means movement, forms, Bu means without, Jue means proverb, key sentence. Put together, it means teaching movement and form but not teaching proverbs. We have to know that in the older days, sharing critical information in martial art teaching was not as open as today since martial art training was used for survival. The attitude changed with changing function. 
For example, in the old days, old martial art teachers would keep confidential some Quan Pu or martial art training manuals. There are two types of contents commonly in Quan Pu, including the list of movements and forms, but more importantly, the Quan Yan or martial proverb. Very often, fundamental principles were written in Quan Yan format. By the way, in the old days, such information was considered secret, largely because of people's attitudes toward it. Information alone cannot be classified as a secret. So, the word secret does not have any negative connotations here, since it was just the way people treat information and knowledge. <clears throat> However, with the advent of the Internet, many people shared those Chinese online with the public. So, has the availability of information made martial art practice any better? Not necessarily. I have noticed that people do not read those Quanyuan even when that information is readily available in the public. Information cannot become knowledge unless one works on it. Having studied Chinese literature, especially the classical Chinese language at an advanced level, I prefer to use martial proverbs to express my understanding of the practice. As you may have noticed in prior videos as well as in the community section of this channel, I often create new proverbs to express my knowledge, if none exist prior. Now, let's talk about a potential issue caused by the use of uh, martial proverbs. Most of the time, a martial proverb is uh, very concise. Usually, a short sentence used to express a great deal of information. Sometimes, people try to squeeze multiple layers of information into a short sentence, potentially causing confusion. As a result, a simple proverb may be translated and interpreted to different ways by different people based on their understanding. Also, one Chinese character can mean different things depending on its context. So, it is no surprise that sometimes people disagree with each other on some common martial proverbs. My suggestion to solve this problem is to refer to the context of the proverb. Any language is usually consistent in terms of providing context around an idea in a group of sentences. In other words, analyzing the surrounding words, terms, or sentences around a proverb can help to understand the true meaning of a proverb. It takes training and experience. By the way, I'm not talking about intentional misinterpretation and misrepresentation, since that is an intentional mistake, and there's no cure for it. So, I will introduce three interesting martial proverbs today. When I introduce a proverb, I always also introduce its context, and today's video is no exception. Let's Talk about each proverb one by one. Topic 2. The first proverb, San Jian Xiang Zhao. San means three, Jian means point, tips, Xiang means mutually, among each other, and Zhao means coordinate or in response to each other. Very often, this word means lightning, but here it has a different meaning. Put together, San Jian Xiang Zhao means that three points coordinate with each other. To fully understand the meaning of this term, let's talk about its historical background. Wu Shu, the author of Shou Bi Lu, or 
hand and the arm record. Was the prominent martial artist who lived from 1611 to 1695. His martial art training work is considered the most important document of weapon training in history, especially spear training. For example, he systematically introduced spear training based on some of the most important classics and systems of his time. Shou Bi Lu, or the hand and arm record, is the master right for those who want to get a deeper understanding of Chinese spear practice. In that book, Wu Shu emphasized the importance of coordination of the three points of spear training. For example, he said, quote, Qiang you san jian da bing, shen fa bu zheng shi yi bing, dang zha bu zha shi er da bing, san jian bu zhao shi san da bing. There are three mistakes in spear practice. First, the body structure is not straight. Second, hesitate when you should strike with the spear and the Third, three points do not coordinate with each other. So, what is the San Jian or three points in the spear practice? They are Bi Jian, Qiang Jian, Zhu Jian, or Nose, Spear Head, and Toes. He also explained how to practice it in his document. Again, this video is not meant to introduce spear training. I'm only introducing Wu Shu's spear training to point out the origin of the term San Jian Xiang Zhao. Later on, Chang Nai Zhou, the author of Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu or Chang Family Martial Art Training Manual, introduced the concept of San Jian Xiang Zhao. Chang Nai Zhou lived between 1724 to 1783, about a hundred years after Wu Shu the Chinese spear expert. For the last decades, when people talk about San Jian Xiang Zhao in China, most people in the martial art community claim Chang Nai Zhou to be the first person to use the concept of San Jian Xiang Zhao, which is not correct. Indeed, Chang Nai Zhou was the first person to systematically elaborate on the concept and the practice of San Jian Xiang Zhao. Again, to us practitioners, the content is more important than chronology or original author. Now, let's focus on the practice content of this term. By the way, Chang Nai Zhou used this term to describe the bare hand practice, not weapon practice. So, from Chang Nai Zhou's time to the present day, People use this term mostly to describe the bare hand practice. So, for the rest of this video, I will only mean bare hand training when I talk about San Jian Xiang Zhao. It is worth noting that the spear training is the most important weapon practice in Chinese military and martial art practice. Many styles developed directly in relation to the spear's concept and the practice. The term San Jian Xiang Zhao is a perfect example. A term used in describing spear training was eventually adopted by martial artists for guiding bare hand training. So, the new question is. What are the three points according to Chang Nai Zhou? Chang Nai Zhou said, quote, San Jian Zhao Zhe, Bi Jian Shou Jian Zhu Jian, Shang Xia, Yi Xian Xiang Zhao Ye. End quote. Translation Three points, including the nose, finger tips, and the toes, should coordinate with each other vertically. End translation. Now we can see the definition of the three points has changed from one involving a spear head to something that only involves three body parts. Then a new question arises. How to explain the word yi xian in the previous sentence? 
E means one and Xian means thread. Literally speaking, it means that the three points align to each other on the vertical thread. For example, Chang Nai Zhou in his book used a specific martial art posture to explain it. However, he is applied further in his book that, in practice, it is more about a principle of a different body parts coordinated together to generate a strong martial power, not merely a posture in which the head, hand, and foot are aligned. It is worth noting that some other books also mentioned the three point concept, such as Shaolin Quan Bu Zha Zu or Shaolin Martial Art Collection, but its explanation of this term is not as good as Chang Nai Zhou's work. The author of that book is unknown, so it is very hard to know when that book was written and edited. Furthermore, the, this term is written as San Jian Xiang Dui, just another expression of the same term. Chang Nai Zhou said, San Jian Wei Qi Zhi Gang Ling, end quote. The three points concept is the overall guidance of energy, end translation. It means that a martial artist applies the practice of San Jian in managing his energy power related practice. In other words, San Jian practice is used to make sure the martial energy in different body parts will unify as one in a self defense situation. Regarding the internal martial art style, Xing Yi emphasizes this concept the most. Especially in the Santi stance practice. It is one of the fundamental requirements for any Xing Yi practitioner when working on Santi posture based movement. For example, the Pichuan or the Metal Fist. So, some people mistakenly claim that the hand, foot, and head should align with each other on the same surface. Of course, the intention is right, but the criteria are incorrect. Think about it. Any three point, if not aligned along a thread, will create a surface. So, this criterion is useless in guiding practice since it totally misses the point of the Xing Yi principle about the three point concept. So, the correct understanding of the three point in Xing Yi is that those three aspects coordinate each other remotely. I have many videos talking about this information on this channel. Please have a look at the Xing Yi playlist. To summarize, three points were originally introduced in Chinese spear training. Then, Chang Nai Zhou introduced this term according to bare hand training. Later, Xing Yi took this term as one of the fundamental principles in guiding San Ti posture and San Ti based movements such as the Pi Quan or the Metal Fist. This term is about coordination remotely, not necessarily on the same thread only. Now, let's move on to the next proverb. Topic 3 Second Proverb Qi Shi Sa Shou, Zhao Ren Cheng Quan. First, let me explain the meaning of this term and then I will introduce its background. This proverb has two sentences. For the first sentence, Qi means go, Shi means one, Sa means loose, Shou means hand. Put it together, the first sentence means that when the hand moves toward the opponent, it should be in a loose state. For the second sentence, Zhao means reaches, touches. This word has at least four sounds. Here it is Zhao. Ren means 
opponent. Cheng means becomes, and Quan means ceased. This sentence means that when a hand reaches the opponent's body, it becomes of a fist. Put together, these two sentences tell us the hand shape changes between moving forward the opponent and the moment when reaching the opponent's body. Please keep in mind that the loosened or relaxed manner of the hand does not mean the hand does not have any strength. It is just a comparative state between reaching and not reaching the opponent's body. This proverb tells us that in martial art practice, we have to adjust how we hold our fist. We know that in order to move our hands fast, muscles should be in a relaxed manner. However, in order to maximize the striking impact, the fist should be solid. So, penetrating power initiated by a fist is mainly due to its strength and speed. The two important factors should be coordinated co correctly. To have a high speed, the muscles on the arm and even other body parts should be relaxed. However, only relaxed muscles will not be able to generate sufficient martial power since it needs to be solid when striking an object. But if a practitioner prematurely strengthens the fist, then the strengthened muscles on the arms will make the fist move slower than it should. So, the solution is to strengthen the fist into a solid form at the moment reaches the opponent's body. Hundreds of years ago, there had not been any systematic study of kinematics. However, martial artists analyzed different effects created by different types of movements in different forms in order to found solutions for maximizing the martial effects. This is one of the examples. Now, where did this term come from? Well, a few old martial arts documents have recorded this term. For example, the famous Yong Wu Yao Yan, or martial art training important teaching, written by Chen Changxing, who lived from 1771 to 1853, the sixth generation of Chen style Tai Chi, but the fourteenth generation of Chen family members, who taught Yang Lu Chan. In this article, he wrote this proverb Chen Xin, the most important Tai Chi scholar in history, also mentioned this term in his Tai Chi book. This term was also recorded in some versions of the famous Jiu Yao Lun or Nine Importance Discussion, a famous martial art document used by the internal self of martial arts, especially by Xing Yi. Again, content matters more than chronology or original author. Regardless, it is good to know where this term came from. By the way, Recently, I came across a person in China shamelessly claiming to be the creator of this proverb, along with many other proverbs that have already existed for hundreds of years. When I showed him historical proof to correct his mistake, he insisted that he had not read those documents be be before coming up with uh, those terms and uh, that those were his original creations. Coming up with one proverb all by yourself without actually being aware of their existence in history may be a one in a million coincidence. However, <clears throat> that person maintained his claim even after I pointed out along with all of other quote unquote creations. That is the whole other issue. <clears throat> 
That's what happens when someone look for fame without any supporting skill. But it never lasts long. Trust me. Anyway, let's come back to this proverb. To summarize, this proverb tells us that we have to balance the two key factors required to have a powerful striking, including the strength of the fist and the speed. This proverb provides us with a solution towards that goal. Now, let's move on to the next proverb. Topic 4. Third proverb. This is the last proverb for today. This proverb was created by Jiang Rongqiao. He published his the Ba Gua book in 1963, which contained this proverb. Jiang Rongqiao created his own Ba Gua practice based on Zhang Zhaodong's teaching. Zhang Zhaodong was the founder of Xing Yi Ba Gua Palm. My grandfather, who studied with Zhang Zhaodong for a longer time compared to Jiang Rongqiao, told me that Jiang simplified Zhang Zhaodong's eight big palm in order to promote his routine. After a few decades, people began to call Jiang Rongqiao's form Jiang Style Ba Gua in order to memorialize his great contribution to promoting Ba Gua practice. This is the book. In the beginning part of this book, there are uh, 17 pairs of uh, sentences titled Introduction of uh, Bagua Practice, and uh, this proverb is uh, one of them. Of course, there are similar expressions of uh, this proverb in other styles of uh, martial art practice, but Jiang Rongqiao used this proverb specifically to describe the basic requirement of a Bagua practice. Shi Fu Changxiong describes the basic Bagua body structure requirement. Shi means to solidify, strengthen. Fu means lower stomach or the lower dantian area. Chang means to relax, smoothen. Xiong means chest. Put it together, it means in Bagua practice, the lower dantian area should be strengthened and the chest should be relaxed. If you have watched my Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao lecture 3, you may remember that this term was originally a concept from Dao De Jing. I have a video titled Different Schools of Xiu Dao, link is in the description. In the beginning of that video, I introduced the concept of Xu Xin Shi Fu. So, in Bagua practice, in order to generate martial power, the chest should have a downward motion while maintaining a relaxed state. But the lower dantian area should be more strengthened compared to the chest area. Traditional Chinese martial arts, especially the internal style of martial arts, emphasize an overall downward sinking body structure. And the downward sinking energy is achieved through relaxing the upper body and intentionally sinking body energy to the lower dantian area. To achieve this result, the chest should be able to move easily without any blockage, as expressed by the second part of this proverb, Chang Xiong O to smoothen and relax the chest. Furthermore, Bagua practice focuses on many different types of circular movement made by the palms in order to practice different martial techniques. In order to have not only speed but also martial power, the chest and the arms should be relaxed but still maintain a solid structure, which is the prerequisite of a correct Bagua structure. To achieve this, the upper back should 
very often be slightly tightened compared to the chest. This is why most of the Bagua palm forward strikes are done when the upper back initiates fighting. So the chest should be relaxed, but the overall upper body still maintains a strong and solid structure. To summarize, this proverb tells us that the ideal state of the chest and the lower dentin area regarding body structure in Bagua practice. Topic 5 Take Aways. First, martial art proverbs are an important part of Chinese martial art practice. Also, a correct explanation of this knowledge is more important than the proverb itself. Second, the first proverb introduces the benefit of a remote coordination between different body parts in order to improve martial power generation. 3. Second proverb introduces the balance between the speed and the strength by changing the hand posture from a relaxed manner to a solid face in order to maximize its martial impact. Four. Third proverb introduces the overall body structure, relax the chest but slightly strengthen the back and the lower dantian area. That ends today's video. Quick reminder to send me your questions for next week's Q&A. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.